My name is Jules Gilson. I'm Professor of Creative Practice here at University College Cork, where it is, it is a beautiful morning. You're welcome here from um, all over Europe and further afield, I see. Um, this morning, we're delighted to have um, Andrea Bright, who's from the University of Vienna, talking about artistic doctorates in film, and my colleague, Kira Chambers, who's Head of Film and Screen Media here at UCC, will be chairing the session today. Thank you very much. I'll pass over to Kira. Hello everyone, I'm really looking forward to today's session. Creative practice is a growing area of interest for us in the Department of Film and Screen Media. We're just starting to supervise creative practice PhDs. We've become very interested in engaging with scholarship and developments in the area. We recently published an issue of our journal Alphaville on researching creative practice with an associated dossier of case studies. Um, this is exciting territory for us, but also quite challenging territory as we start to figure out what forms creative practice may take, the relationships between the academy and the industry, and all of the opportunities and challenges that are associated with um, engaging with creative practice PhDs in particular, um, in contrast with traditional PhDs. So we are really delighted today to be joined by Andrea Bright. Um, Andrea has vast experience in this field as a widely published scholar in film studies and gender studies, having worked in Canada, the USA, in Europe. Andrea is also an active member of Elias Share Network, chairing the Artistic Research Steering Group which published a seminal document, The Florence Principles on Artistic Doctorates in the Arts. So there is no better person to tell us about the current landscape in relation to artistic doctorates in film and to help us consider um, some of the questions that may um, be posed in relation to um, film practice artistic doctorates. So thank you so much for joining us today, Andrea. I'm really looking forward to, to hearing what you have to say. Thank you, Kira, for this very kind introduction and thanks uh, Jules, for this invitation, I'm delighted to be with you in Cork today, as it were, uh, digitally. Um, and uh, let me jump right into it because time is precious. So, um, right, I hope you all see the screen unobstructed and I'll start at the beginning. So um, this is what uh, my input will be about. Uh, it's four parts. Why artistic research doctorates? Um, second one is artistic research in film. I will give you some uh, principles. Then I will show you a very short uh, example, an excerpt of a film and um, talk about its uh, methods in terms of filmic artistic research. And then uh, I will already close and be uh, delighted to hear your questions and discuss uh, with you. So um, why artistic research doctorates anyway? <laughs> Um, I always start with the uh, Bologna process that um, you know many of uh, Europe, uh, Europe's institutions um, implemented, or all of Europe's inst uh, higher arts education institutions um, had to implement uh, during the last 20 years. And what the Bologna process meant was not only introducing, um, you know, three three cycle education. BA, MA, and PhD instead of uh, diploma studies, um, which, you know, is in especially German-speaking countries uh, was the case. But also uh, the Bologna process transformed the art universities into research uh, institutions. And this uh, transformation meant that uh, art universities had to think about what kind of research, what, you know, how how would they define research? What is research at art universities? So obviously there is uh, a lot of different kinds of research at art universities. Uh, there's art history, there's natural sciences, um, color chemistry, restoration practices. Uh, but there's also, uh, there, there also was generated the need to define research uh, coming out of artistic practice. So this kind of practice-based research, um, I would say was uh, due to the fact that uh, universities, also art universities had to turn into research institutions. 
So PhD candidates are of course the uh, most important factors, if you if you like, uh, in in research processes because PhD candidates are those who dedicate the most time to research. They have uh, often the least uh, administrative uh, or teaching responsibilities, so they can really devote themselves to uh, PhDs, to their PhDs, and to uh, bringing the research in their fields forward. So um, the PhD candidates are those actors who bring uh, innovation to the research, who expand the uh, respective fields. And uh, so it's really, really important to establish a PhD culture at the, um, at the research institutions. So um, this is especially uh, challenging and difficult for areas where research does not have a long tradi tradition as is the case with artistic research. So uh, with the Florence principles, and they were already mentioned in Kira's introduction, we tried to establish a form of standardization which was basically saying that um, the standards in artistic research doctorates are no other than the standards in other research doctorates as well. So this is a very important um, claim, I think, to make because um, the, you know, as I always say, the normal universities, um, meaning the non-art universities, were of course looking at artistic research uh, doctorates saying, well, you know, what is this? Um, uh, this is art, how can we, how can we talk about that in terms of research? Um, and we, uh, we really made this claim very strong and I think that was important as a step towards recognition of artistic research doctorates in the European landscape. So what are the principles of artistic research in terms of film practice? Um, I have tried to, uh, to kind of come up with a few principles, not so much in, in a way of um, normative principles, but principles taken from the status quo, taken from the practice. So filmic artistic research generates uh, new knowledge by applying artistic methods to research questions. So that's the very basic uh, definition, I think, of what research does. It generates new knowledge. And in, in the arts, it's, you know, no different, but it's applying artistic methods to research questions. So this is also, I think, an important uh, point that uh, in artistic research, uh, it is artistic methods that are applied. Artistic research projects follow the same steps as scientific research that are uh, the formulation of a research question which must be explicated uh, and situated in the state of the art of the respective field, um, a, cho a method must be chosen for undertaking the research and also this has to be explicated. Uh, interim results and results have to be presented to a fellow community of professionals in the field, meaning in the art field and in the field of artistic research. And the results are disseminated through what the community has agreed upon to be appropriate channels. So these are, uh, you know, very basic uh, rules uh, you, you uh, might uh, know completely. I just wanted to kind of um, say that again, or maybe put it on the table so that we, we have a kind of common denominator, a common frame of what we are talking about. Um, I mean, I think the points are pretty straightforward um, and they sound really not so um, challenging in theory, in practice they often are, as you will know, being PhD candidates or PhD supervisors, for example, to um, explicate a method in artistic research is um, pretty challenging. I think, you know, what is a method? What 
you know, can be called a method. Uh, very often methods have to be um, explored, have to be invented, you know, uh, for your uh, specific research question. So I already come to an example because I always think it's easier to talk about um, these things when uh, one can look at one piece of work and then from it deduct what artistic research uh, strategies and uh, pedagogies could mean. And I've chosen uh, an excerpt of a film by an Austrian filmmaker, Belinda Kasim Kaminsky, Unearthing in Conversation. It's a 12 minute long film. I will show um, about half of it. The film is from 2017. And uh, Belinda, who is uh, also a teacher at the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna and a, a pedagogue. So she's really also invested in, uh, in teaching and in didactics. Um, so not only a filmmaker, but also uh, a pedagogue. I think this is quite uh, important. She says, in unearthing and conversation, uh, and um, I've written that down because um, it's not a very common uh, person. Paul Shebesta is an Austrian Czech uh, missionary and uh, ethnologist who lived around the turn of the century to the 20th century. So she is dealing with this, uh, with this uh, scientist in her film. So Shebesta's uh, photographs serve as an entrance points to performative negotiation of the lingering effects of colonialism in the present, uh, in the past, present and future. So uh, just um, a very short quote at the beginning. Uh, so we kind of know what we are thrown into and I will I will start the screening um, immediately and will, as I was advised, try to... All right, so uh, let me read more of a quote of a text that Belinda uh, wrote also about her work. So um, I have to... Sorry. Uh, inspired my reading of Saideria uh, Hartmann's Scenes of Subjection, uh, I became interested in understanding the specific scenes of uh, subjections in the frame of Shabesta's research. I reflected on the possibilities of retelling the stories I encountered in the archive uh, without reproducing violence and thereby feeding the desire for black suffering because I felt the need that was had happened and how it is rel related to what is happening in the present. By creating artistic constellations in which the haunting effects of colonialism in Europe, particularly in Austria, can be verbalized and negotiated, I'm attempting to unsettle with innocence by uh, silenced and suppressed, working in a variety of mediums, collage, photography, installation, and so on. I'm interested in regimes of looking, presentations of so-called otherness. So um, this work that Belinda did was her uh, PhD work for the PhD practice program at the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna. And I think uh, it, it shows beautifully what uh, methods in artistic research uh, can be undertaken. And I've uh, made a list uh, kind of deriving also from, uh, from her words and from her texts, what these methods of artistic research might be. And maybe you could uh, look at these and um, think about if they make sense in the context of uh, your own work or of work that you have uh, seen in artistic research. So uh, one uh, method would be uh, what Belinda calls the performative negotiation. So it's kind of tapping into tradition of performance art and rhetoric, right? So it's kind of situating, situating a work into a specific field in a specific uh, state of the art also. Inspired by my reading, um, this quote, of course, refers to literature uh, research, desk research, to um, theory impact, 
of course, um, in in you know in the in the tradition of fine art theory, makes uh, a very uh, uh, has a very important um, role to play in artistic research. Understanding the specific scenes of subjection, I think, uh, could be in more general, in a more general way, uh, termed an analytical approach to a certain material. So um, there is, it's a very material way also that uh, Belinda deals with her topic. She found these photographs and the photographs she collects in archival boxes. And these are, uh, you know, parts of the material the, she then produces also. Um, possibilities of retelling the story. So retelling history, mockumentary, her story, these are all concepts of, um, you know, that play a really important role, obviously, in, uh, in art, um, especially in film art, I would, I would say, and are tools of the trade of artistic research and filmic practice. To talk about what has happened, so she uses an historical approach um, related to what is happening, refers to a systematic synchronous um, analysis to political activism and its aim and methods digging up what lingers. So that's also, I think, something very, uh, very much related to the core essence of filmmaking, you know, uh, investment into the subconscious, the unconscious um, uh, is really a very classical trope for, uh, for film. Creating artistic constellations. Um, um, it's also an important method. Uh, she, you know, she points to art as the crucial tool for knowledge production. Verbalized and negotiated. Um, so, as we have seen also in this clip, um, and I'm sorry that you didn't hear all the text because I, uh, I stupidly muted myself. <laughs> but that meant that I muted the video as well. So there is this investment in language, which is pretty uh, 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 visible and, and, and audible in this work, I think. Uh, and then she cites all the, uh, all the spectrum of fine arts that she is using in her film work. Uh, finally, she uses dialogue as a structure she says, and that's, I think, the most important methodological decision in this work that, uh, you know, it comes in the title, Unearthing in Conversation, and she uses the um, structure of the dialogical structure within the work, but also in relation to the audience, in relation to the camera and uh, with, with many other dimensions, she uses dialogue as a structure, as a structural tool, as a method for uh, generating uh, the knowledge and insights that she wants to generate. So in closing, um, there is no slide. For closing, um, I'm over time already anyway, so um, I wanted to, um, stop here and uh, really jump into the discussion because um, I hope that this um, brought up some uh, points that you also have from your, your work or also from your experience. So thank you for your um, time and patience for now and I'm really looking forward to, the, to your comments that can be raised in all ways possible uh, that Zoom provides. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. And, and just to let people know, if you want to ask a question, to please raise your hand and we'll pass those questions on in just a moment. I had two questions for you, Andrea. Um, one is a bit abstract and the other is more practical. But in the first, um, I wanted to ask you, in the example you gave us there, it's, it's a beautiful example of how academic screen practice can challenge all the traditional conventions of filmmaking. And it can 
come up with new methodologies, it can experiment with radical content, it can be quite political, and it actually gives practitioners the chance to free themselves of the commercial imperatives that are often imposed to them through traditional funding structures and the mainstream industry practices. So many of our PhD candidates come from industry, they're proficient filmmakers with a long experience, and um, they, they find the academic space quite liberating in terms of exploring work that is more experimental for them. And that of course leads to contributions and knowledge which are very valuable in the academy. But what I wondered was, is there a way that this kind of liberation can then feed back into industry and perhaps challenge some of the dominant restrictive practices within industry? Mm, I think totally. I mean, uh, if, if we look at Industry, I mean, industry is a really wide term, I think. And um, I don't know, if you look at the practices you see on Netflix, for example, I think this is very often where the experimental stuff is really happening. Uh, I wouldn't really oppose industry versus academic, but uh, industry maybe versus the art market, because the art market is the in a way, the equivalent to, to the industry. And um, I mean, with films like Belinda's, uh, there is, of course, uh, a space for that in the art market. So um, in a certain segment, there's, uh, this completely feeds back into the whole uh, uh, industrial system of the art market, if you want, you know. But often, of course, people have this uh, preconceptions of artistic research as being the kind of um, not sellable art or the, the kind of the not so great artists who do uh, artistic research or so. But I think these are really um, cliches and they, they rather reflect a, a kind of different discourse than uh, really give, give a hint of what it is. So coming back to your question, yeah, I totally think that this is this feeds back to, to what we see in, in kind of mainstream film culture and um, we, see it, we see it already. I mean, I can give you an example, actually. Uh, just yesterday, I watched um, uh, an episode of Black as Fuck. If, you, if you've seen this show, it's a net Netflix, uh, very, you know, very completely commercial, um, commercial show, a series um, of, a, um, of a media tycoon. And uh, it really engages with a lot of the post-colonial issues and criticisms and uh, racialized discourses and, and all that that are triggered also in the work of Belinda. And you see it in a different form, but it's not so entirely different. So, um, yeah. Okay, thank you. So, so the second question was the format that a creative practice viva may take. So a traditional viva is normally a lengthy discussion in a room with a panel, but I just wondered um, if you had any kind of examples of how differently formatted a creative practice viva might be, given it might involve um, screenings or video installations. How, is, how are those processes kind of changing the, the traditional viva format? Mm. Well, I think they are really challenging to the institution because um, for that you really have to provide the space and the exhibition context that the work can be shown and it can be seen, it can be seen by the whole panel that participates in Wi-Fi, which sometimes, especially in times of corona pandemic, is not so easy. But yeah, this is Obviously, um, this must be the case, but then I think the, the traditional format of the panel, then, uh, you know, being, being critical and engaging in an ac academic discourse, I think this is, um, I mean, at least to my knowledge, this is how it's done. And I personally think this is also how it should be done. It's really only the, the presentation and the reception of the work that needs to be uh, different and that needs to get a different format. Okay, so, so at this point, I'll hand over to Inesh Bento Coelho, our um, postdoctoral researcher on the Visit Visioning Future project. And Ines is gonna share some questions from the audience. 
Thank you, Chiara. Thank you, Andrea. Um, I would like to ask you if you've got any questions to please keep them coming. You can write them on the Q&A tab. If you'd like to speak, you can also raise your hand. We've got a couple of questions coming and I'll start with um, a question I have for you, Andrea, which is what would you say that the pedagogies and the policies and are necessary in terms of what do PhD programs in film and screen media need next? As in, what will be the next steps for development? What is missing at the moment? Hmm. I think the, the sorry, I, I just have a procedural question. Sh should I read the uh, Q&A questions or will you be keeping track of them? Because I will be keeping track ah, of them. Okay, because now, <laughs> okay, I was a little bit distracted because I was already if reading. If something but coming you, now, I will bring them to you. Yeah, wonderful. So uh, your question was the next steps in the field of filmic artistic research. Um, well, as a matter of fact, we are planning a platform event of the Working Group of Artisting Research uh, by Elia, and uh, in there we are going to try to make a kind of um, state-of-the-art assessment of where artistic research is at the moment in the various fields, so also of course in the film field, and you know, what, what can we learn from each other, meaning what can, for example, the film field learn from the fine arts field or from the music field uh, or vice versa. And I think it's really, it, your question is really difficult because um, the, the state that artistic research in the different fields is in differs not only from the fields, but also from the countries a lot. So, you know, what's next is, is a really difficult question. Apart from uh, an answer saying, well, obviously we need resources, we need money, we need the uh, respective programs, we need the, you know, uh, calls by the Horizon uh, Europe uh, framework um, by the EU that takes account uh, of artistic research in all fields. So, you know, that's, that's the obvious question. Yes, and I think film and screen media is uh, quite well positioned in between the performing arts and the visual arts in that respect, as in there's always the visual concern in terms of the construction of the imagery, but there are also the performative aspects associated with performing, setting up a scene. So I think it has quite specific challenges in living across these two fields, as you were saying. Um, I've got a couple of questions from the audience and um, they all came up at the same time. So one of the questions is how might students look at finding sponsorship as a source of funding, which seems to be a quite challenging. Uh, do you have any thoughts or suggestions on this in terms of putting the financial structures in place? Hmm. That's uh, difficult to answer in terms of not knowing what country we are talking about. So uh, in some countries, there are provisions for that, uh, like in Switzerland or in Austria, also partly in the Netherlands, where you can um, apply for artistic research projects from the national science funds who distribute uh, money also for artistic research projects. But for example, in Germany, that's really difficult. And in, um, and in the UK, um, I guess it's also really difficult. I don't know about Ireland um, actually, but I guess there's also no um, special program for artistic research projects that is kind of bookmarked by the science funds. Um, but I don't know, I mean, you, um, you would obviously know better to answer that. <laughs> um, I'm going to jump on to another question here because uh, I think the funding structures can be quite specific as well, uh, which is the relationship between the written format and the practice-based research. So to what degree does the written component matter? Um, and in what mm -hmm. ways could the delivery format, as in the submission of the PhD, be more creative? Mm. That's a very, a very good question. <laughs> um, Only difficult questions today. No, no, no. It's a very, I mean, in the, in the Florence principles, that was the, that was the core discussion, you know, because um, countries also differ very much in terms of 
you know, what they want as a PhD thesis. So there are countries that are very happy if the PhD thesis is a work of art with no written component. And there are other countries that uh, insist on not only a written component, but also on a scholarly written dissertation of 400 pages. So, you know, these, th this is the spectrum, really. I mean, I can only say what I personally think. I think the main part of, of a PhD in artistic research is absolutely the artistic work. But I do think there needs to be a reflection, a meter level, if you want, and this needs to be uh, written. And um, it's not, I, I wouldn't think of a kind of scholarly uh, thesis of, of several hundred pages, but of a reflection on the work of art by the uh, maker in, you know, in terms of um, a meter level. And this can only be achieved, I think, by verbal language. And I've got a question about supervision in terms of uh, potential supervisors and what their expertise is. Um, whether they should be experts in the technicalities of filmmaking, if they need to have a proven track record of knowing how to the specific technicalities behind filmmaking, or whether it is enough that they are an expert in the teams being considered and not necessarily having the filmmaking experience. Um, so perhaps one of these areas needs to be mastered, but how do you see the balance between um, the different areas that we have, the thematics, we have the technical elements, so what does, what does the supervision need to bring to the table in a way? Mm. I think the, the supervisor needs to be an expert in supervision. I think that's the most important uh, qualification. So uh, that's, and that's sadly very often the qualification that supervisors do not have. Uh, a PhD project is uh, a very difficult endeavor. It takes uh, several years. Uh, you know, you usually you have to you have to earn a living apart from doing a PhD uh, work. It's difficult to focus for several years on this work, and it's a qualification work. So it will be judged by a panel of people maybe unknown to you. You have to inscribe yourself with a PhD thesis into the tradition of academia. I mean, there is no, no way uh, behind that. So a, a supervisor really needs to be aware of the difficulties that come along in this process. And I think the kind of um, the, the expertise in terms of, you know, technicality or in terms of artistic content, that's one thing. But the more, I think the more important thing is a kind of coaching competence, you know, that you really are a mentor and a coach in terms of, um, you know, be, be, being part of the project in that, and that's that's uh, and that's where there's also uh, training needed for supervisors, and uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's the most important thing. So we spoke so far a little bit about supervision uh, vivas. Um, so what about the historical backgrounds? Um, we've got a question here. You, you made a reference to the to man with the movie camera as one of the first examples of artistic research. And the question is, does this imply that there is a longer historical narrative for artistic research and possibly one that emerges outside the academic mm. discourse? Mm, yeah. Um, well, it's always, you know, who tells the story and who makes the narrative. And uh, I think this is um, important also to tell the, 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 the history of artistic research has to be told differently in the respective fields. So whereas in fine arts, it's always uh, or very often said to be the beginning in the 1960s with conceptual art where artistic research kind of stems from, if you like. I think in film, um, they, it, it's a different history. And I, I do think that the uh, constructivists um, and, you know, Vertov in, in particular is, if, if you look at that film still, uh, to, I mean, not only is it still extremely pleasurable to look at today, but I think it's really, 
uh, it really makes sense to look at it from the perspective of, of artistic research. I mean, was it artistic research? I, I don't know. And maybe the question isn't really important also, but I think for, for making a claim, you know, mm-hmm. of, of a tradition of artistic research, one, one, one could go there. Also other people uh, have a different uh, approach to artistic research, namely in terms of they say it's a kind of uh, marriage between art and science. And they then go back until you know the the um, the uh, Vitruvian man and uh, a kind of um, uh, uh, Renaissance idea of an artist that's uh, who is both um, a scientist and an artist and um, or even antiquity and I'm I'm you know I'm not sure that that's for for me that doesn't do the trick but I think Vertov is is always a great um, is always a great start. Yes. Uh, we might have a question from Jessica. Would you like to ask, to ask a question? You've got someone with a raised hand? No? Maybe not. <laughs> I've got a couple more questions for you. Um, oh, but there she is. I think Jessica is. Yeah? yeah. Oh, she must have hit an, uh, the wrong button. With so many buttons in the screen, it's easily to hit the wrong one. Uh, okay, thank you, Jessica. Um, I guess my next question is, so the principles of artistic research in film you presented come very much from the scientific model and are also the principles that I've seen used in visual arts programs, in performing arts programs. So they have this, they come, they bring this historical baggage. I guess my question is, I'm wondering whether artistic research sometime in the future, probably not right now and probably not today, but I wonder if we might need a whole new um, set of principles that are derived from the practice itself and not necessarily from the the, uh, scientific models of research that are so ingrained in society for the last hundred years. So I was wondering what your thoughts are on that since you are at the forefront of that discussion. Mm Um, it's a strategic, it's a, it's it's a purely strategic thing. So if you establish a new discipline in, in academia, you know, and this is what it is, because this is what we are talking about. We are not talking about artistic research per se, but artistic research as a PhD project and in terms of curricula and in terms of an institutional framework. If you want to establish a new discipline and you claim that this new discipline is completely different than anything else, you know, then um, it's really difficult to implement that. But if you say this new discipline is completely different in terms of what it produces, but it's completely not different in the framework these things get produced then I think it's, you know, it makes it possible to implement it into the, uh, into the institution. And I think um, that's, the, um, th- th- that's the way to go, you know, not to make any claims of essentialist differences, you know, that art would be so essentially different in its way of knowledge production, then I don't know, medicine or, um, you know, what have you. I mean, all that, you know, all the disciplines also in the sciences are very different. I mean, if you look at PhD thesis, for example, in medicine and a PhD thesis in philosophy, I mean, you know, the one is 25 pages long and consists of a formula, if you want, in medicine. And in, in, in philosophy, it's a book of, of 500 pages, you know, making maybe not even one thesis, but, you know, being an exploration of uh, historical lines of arguments, I don't know. So um, the the disciplines within, uh, within science or within, within the established um, scholarly fields are also extremely different. So I don't, I I would never claim this essentialist uh, uniqueness of artistic research. 
thank you. That's really helpful to um, hear that perspective. And perhaps that is something that may change over time uh, in the future. We've got another question um, going back into the process of uh, filmmaking. I'm going to read it out because I haven't had the chance to get my head around it. The question is how to make process-based research in film. As the making of the film itself is sort of results-based, as there will be an actual object, whereas in imp more improvisational processes, the object itself is not necessarily existing uh, or only exists for a few moments. Um, Um, if I understood it correctly, it was not uh, not, not completely uh, easy for me to hear. Um, uh, so the question was about um, there is so much more behind than the actual object or product or want, that we can then see that can be, for example, a 12 minute film like in Belinda uh, Belinda's case, but the work behind it might have taken 12 years and how does this relation uh, Yes, yeah. and how does that process of making the work behind it? Because we used to see the final product. So mm -hmm. what is what are what is behind that process of mm -hmm. uh, research in film? Well, what's behind it is uh, hopefully uh, uh, you know a very um, dense and very committed work of uh, posing a research question and kind of negotiating with the research question. And I would say that a successful PhD project in artistic research shows that even if it's only some seconds long. And I think we do this, I mean, this is the beautiful potency of art, right? That you can, you, you can create this density of very complicated and very uh, complex um, issues with artistic means and uh, by, you know, by ways of, of the aesthetic. And um, I think that you will be able to, to, to see what's behind if, you know, if it's done well. And because on the other hand, you can have hours and hours of film and, um, you know, there may, you know, <laughs> there's maybe not much knowledge generation behind, but, you know, reproduction of images, a mm -hmm. mere, you know, of course, mm -hmm. I mean, we see that every day, right? I mean, uh, and um, following upon from that, what would you say are the challenges in pursuing a PhD in film and screen media? I find the field is very much in between the performing arts and the visual arts, so you can borrow from these fields, and all fields have different conventions. But what would you say are the challenges in terms of doctoral studies, um, of occupying that space, and of pursuing mm -hmm. your research in film and screen media? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly that. It's exactly that, um, you know, finding the space to occupy. This is exactly, you. I mean, you said it. Because if you, uh, I don't know, if you're a painter, right? And you do artistic research work in uh, painting. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, then you tie into a, a you know a very known and very obvious uh, tradition that you can also define as being a real linear tradition that you can you know tap in tap yourself into it you know criticize it and of course deconstruct it completely but it's you know it's it's an easy story to tell if you like but with film practice, I also find there is so many ways that you can uh, approach and also so many people um, use it. I mean, especially if you look at artistic research projects, film or video work is almost always part of the dissemination pro process of the documentation process. So it's really difficult to discern you know, uh, uh, or maybe it's not so difficult, but it's it's important to discern between film as a medium of um, recording a research process or of commenting on a research process and film that uses filmic means to, 
delve into questions that uh, generate knowledge. That that is the challenge, exactly like you said it. Thank you, uh, Andrea. I'm going to pass over to Chiara. Okay, just one very final quick question to, to Andrea. Um, and this is in relation to the local context. Um, you mentioned that creative practice is a way in, in some cases to interrogate post-colonial relationships, and we have a lot of those in Ireland, but we also have very significant challenges in terms of the way our current film in, and broadcast industry operates, particularly related to inequalities um, and the representation of gender has been a huge issue. And there are movements to address that at the moment. But I wondered, given that we now have a growing body of academic practitioners in film throughout Ireland, is this something that we should be mobilizing as a network to challenge some of the, the inequalities in industry and perhaps um, use it as an opportunity for public discourse on some of the problems in terms of representation, but also production contexts? Mm. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, that's uh, absolutely. And it's, uh, I think it's great that it's happening in, in, in many countries. I mean, that, you know, you, you might be aware of uh, the German film industry and there, you know, there are strong voices uh, raising these inequalities. And of course, they are, um, they are awful. And they are, I mean, awful is a silly word, but they are really... <laughs> Uh, they have to be abolished and they have to be addressed and they have to be changed and it's a it's a long fight but it has to start somewhere and so yes um, that's a really important um, important issue I think. So I think we're going to be drawing things to a close there. Um, Andrea, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and your expertise and your time with us today. We could go on with these discussions for hours, but I believe that there is a possibility of sending on questions to Anesh so that the channel of communication can be kept open. Um, so thank you again for being with us today and I'll pass back to Jules at this point. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Andrea. That's been a, a, a real pleasure. Um, I'm going to, because we've actually, um, we've, we've a few minutes left. I'm just going to take a question from um, Barry Monaghan. And he says, do you see a distinction between ideas and argument in the creative research? And if the thesis, i.e. the argument is separate, where is the project, where in the project does it reside? Now that might be a bit thorny to come to right at the very end, but I wondered if you had maybe a response to that, can you read that there? Mm. Well, I think that the, um, I think that uh, it's really a part and parcel of an artistic research project to define what an argument looks like mm -hmm. in the specific practice. Because uh, of course, in, in, in scholarly argumentation, what is an argument and what is a theory and you know, how a theory produces an argument is, is you know, very different from you know, in sociology or in, in philological fields, but it is more defined. But in artistic practice, I think it's, it's a really, really tricky question what an argument is and also i mean as i said before it sounds so easy you have to have a method you have to have a research question and you have to you have to form an argument it's so difficult to come up with that with um with an artistic practice so that's the that's the challenge but i i i think and i i'm i mean i'm not not a practicing artist but i do hope that artists find exactly the pleasure in that in you know in expanding their practice into being argumentative and being uh, uh questioning Thank you, Andrea. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to just round it up. I'd like to thank Kira Chambers uh, for chairing the session, Inesh for um, maneuvering around all the questions. Thank you, um, Inesh, and behind the scenes, Michael Ryan, who's um, doing our tech today. So this is the fourth uh, seminar from the Visioning the Future Artistic Doctorates in Research seminar series. And this first part is all about us looking closely at particular disciplines, but also looking at the field within Ireland. 
So um, I hope you'll join us next week, um, Thursday at 11 o'clock Irish time. Um, next week we have Gretchen Schiller, who is um, director of the Performance Lab in Grenoble, and she's going to be talking about her work, but she's also going to be talking about a support organization that she's developed within the French context. So we look forward very much to that. Um, we are recording these sessions, and part of the session today, uh, not the little film clip for copyright reasons, but the rest of it will be on our website, so you'll be able to look at that subsequently. So I'd like to thank everybody, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.